Hello, I'm Dr. Andrew Darling with Daring Research and Development, currently hosted at the Austin Hackerspace in Austin, Texas. Now, uh, you can read a bit more about me and my company at either my company website or on the Kickstarter description, but to get down to brass tacks, I want to grow giant insects. Great, glorious giant insects uh, and other arthropods. So we're talking uh, mealworms the size of sausages, uh, millipedes you could trip over, rhinoceros beetles where you could use their shells for furniture. Now, many of you out there are probably asking why. Why, for the love of God, why? Well, I could list off a litany of reasons uh, from the many insect species used as uh, for food crops in the developing world to insect-derived biological products like silk. But if I'm true to my heart, it's because they're great, glorious, giant insects. And of course, the more enlightened of you out there realize that the compelling question is not why, but how. It boils down to a fundamental difference in physical chemistry and physiology between mammals and insects. In mammals like us, the air is brought into the lungs, but then the oxygen is distributed by the circulatory system. By contrast, in insects, their circulatory system is much simpler, and its primary purpose is distribution of nutrients other than oxygen. Oxygen distribution is handled by a series of passive air-filled tubes throughout the insect with openings throughout the, si the sides. Now, this represents a fundamental limit on insect growth. Um, if you wanted a larger insect, you would need a lot more tubes, and eventually what you have is more like a balloon than an insect. However, there's an exploit here. If you increase the percentage of oxygen a great deal, it doesn't do much at all for a creature like this, but it changes the mathematics of diffusion a great deal for an insect. You can space out the tubes much more broadly, allowing for a much, much larger animal. How large? Well, no one really knows. Some simple conservative experiments have increased insects about 15% over the course of a year. But what about breeding over multiple generations? What about using concentrations of oxygen higher than have ever been seen on Earth? How large could these creatures get? Now in the biohacking space of the Austin Hacker Space. This is where a number of different experiments are performed using plants, chemicals, and other aspects of biology. And this is also where the industrial scale of large insect program is going to be. The Hacker Space has demonstrated an unexpected amount of enthusiasm for growing giant insects over certain periods of anticipation. Now, right here, I've got a sample used industrial oxygen concentrator. And right here, I've got a sample 10-gallon terrarium. It would be a reasonably simple matter to connect this to this, or a series of terraria, for the uh, industrial treatment program, and I will. But that's not the real goal here. I want to reduce the size and cost to enable the home user. I don't just want to grow giant insects. I want to enable you to grow giant insects. The plan is based on two phases, each of which will have a separate round of fundraising here on Kickstarter. Phase one is the development of the hardware. This includes a large-scale version, which I will operate here at the hackerspace, and the design of a smaller, cheaper system for the home user. I anticipate this phase will last three months. The second phase will have its own round of fundraising, and it will be focused on breeding as many species of insects and as many terraria as funding will allow over one year. This will also include hiring dedicated personnel, the giant insect interns, which I think you'll agree absolutely must be the official title of the job on these people's resumes. We may also sell kits for the do-it-yourself systems, but that's uncertain at this point. This project is not intended to create a product for sale. It's not about the profit, it's about the giant insects. For the phase one budget, which this Kickstarter is specifically aimed at, I have the budget broken down here into the industrial oxygen system, the terraria themselves, prototyping and validating a home user system, and miscellaneous costs. I've worked with numerous environmentally controlled live animal enclosures in the past, so I'm pretty confident in this budget. Any funding received beyond the goal will go to expediting and expanding phase two. More insects, more terraria, more insect caretakers. Which brings us to the rewards for donation. For a $10 donation, you will gain access to the Arthropod Rex development log and be able to observe the equipment development and trials. This would probably be enough for a technologically savvy user to develop their own equipment.
For a $25 donation, in addition to the development log, you will receive an Arthropod Rex t-shirt, the design to be announced during Phase 1. For a $35 donation, you will receive detailed instructions for how to build your own home user system. Most people ask if insects from the breeding program are a possible reward, but at this point I cannot offer that as it is contingent on future funding. But in order to get to phase two, breeding of large numbers of insects, we need to first fund phase one, this project, the development of the terraria. Please keep that in mind as you consider your donation. Kickstarter specifically asks that any possible risks for a project be discussed here, but what possible risks could there be in a project of this sort? Okay, I suppose there could be a few things. First and foremost is safety, but perhaps not the kind of safety you'd think of. Fire safety. While the concentration of oxygen we're using here is much less than from home medical oxygen concentrators, there could be a chance of fire for inexperienced home users. Fire safety needs to be paramount, diluting oxygen concentrations for any exhaust from the system. In terms of total project success, there's a chance we could get to a good start on phase one and then not muster the funding to take it to phase two. If there's a chance that phase two will go forward, but the insects that, that result may not be that impressive. Different species will have different responses to the high oxygen environment, or it may take many more generations of breeding than we can perform to see truly enormous insects. Lastly is the issue of regulation. While the USDA does not regulate experimentation with invertebrates, a number of cities have come up with ordinances on the subject to address a recent surge in urban insect farming. We here at Dairy and R&D believe in an open regulatory framework for insect farming. After all, if it were a crime to breed giant insects, then only criminals would have them. And how terrifying would that be? So thank you for considering donating to this very worthy endeavor. Personally, I consider this a rare opportunity to create something truly wondrous, great in more than one meaning of the word, and I hope you choose to be a part of it.